to dump the EU costs, but no one did. Well, actually, I've got to interrupt you. Here's a, here's a really good point here about newspapers. Chaz in Newark says, how come the newspapers are all anti-EU? They are vaguely anti-EU, but they don't say what I've been saying tonight. How many newspapers admit the nation's been abolished? Why doesn't the Daily Mail start Well, a I think the Express had a headline saying just that, didn't it? Right. OK, well then, why don't they start a campaign to get a general strike going? A strike against the EU and a strike against our corrupt politicians at Westminster until they either resign or repeal the treaties. Uh, is it not the case that, you know, the laws about striking are such that to, to solicit a general strike would pro possibly be illegal? I think that's only a case if it's a trade union. We are, we are not a trade union, we're just the people of England. So I think it, it would be perfectly OK. Okay. Another thing we could do is we need a million strong permanent demonstration in, in Westminster and that's the reason that un, under the Serious Organised Crime and Police Act 2000, um, 2005 they've made it illegal to demonstrate within one kilometre of Westminster. Well you have to have a licence to demonstrate exactly. so you can apply for that. Yeah. And also t two million people demonstrated against the war in Iraq and we still had a war in Iraq. Yeah but it effectively needs to be a blockade of London until they resign. But in, in, um, in 1990, we had the poll tax protests, and yep. that had an effect, didn't it? Yes. So-called poll tax riots. Y yeah, but see, that wasn't really affecting core EU policy, so they could... They didn't really change anything, they just changed the name of it. But well, they, they, they <laughs> abolished the poll tax and put it back to council tax rates. Yeah, you know, they, the, they the rates. renamed it council tax, basically. Yeah. Well, no, 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 that's not true, because poll tax was a tax on the individual. It still is a tax on and the now, individual. And, and it went back to being a tax on the property. No, it used to be a tax on property, but council, council tax is now a tax on the individual, very definitely. Council tax is poll tax. They just renamed it. It's all well, I, I, yes. I'm not sure I agree with no, you. No, there, no, no. If you own no property and you just rent a room, you get taxed council tax. It's got nothing to do with property. You get taxed as an individual. It's a fact. Okay. A third thing is national civil disobedience would do it. If we refuse to pay taxes to our corrupt government, which, is, which has no legal right to be there anyway, um, refuse to cooperate with them any, in any way, and this would have to be on a large scale, be at least 10 million people. It's going to be very hard, isn't it, because one or two people say, well, I'm not going to pay my tax. Then... Obviously, yeah. they're going to go to straight to, straight to jail, do not pass go. It's going to be, you that, know, it's very yeah. hard to have that mass movement all of a sudden. That's why we need the newspapers again. We need, the, need newspapers, 100,000 circulation minimum. Um, and, of course, the really easy way to do it is to persuade our military to arrest our criminal politicians and put them on trial for treason. Just a, a march up to Westminster slap the whole lot in the cells, put them up before judges, and of course you would have to have every judge screened to make sure he's not a Freemason or you wouldn't get a fair outcome. But you're, you said earlier that every judge is a Freemason. There, no, no. Uh, pretty well all judges are Freemasons. You can find handfuls. You can find honest judges. There are a small number of honest judges. Mm. Not, we'll have to appoint some. Sorry? If not, we'll have to appoint some. So those are the four national campaigns. Well, this sounds like the October Revolution, doesn't it? I mean, this is 1917. You're actually <laughs> suggesting that, you know, we storm the Bastille. I know I'm mixing my revolutions here. Or, or you know... Um... Yeah, the difference between us and the Bastille is all we want is to uphold our existing constitution, which our corrupt and criminal parliament, Westminster, is destroying. Westminster is a puppet of the European Union. It is not our parliament. But surely you would also be suggesting that we get rid of our royal family from what you've said. Yeah, we need a decent English royal family. You're right. We do. Does it, what about a Welsh royal family? <laughs> okay. You know, the ancient... Yeah, yeah, yeah. British, British royal family. We need a British royal family, not a German one. OK, Britons. Yeah, we need Britons. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, hmm. OK, well, obviously, this is not necessarily the policy of this programme <laughs> that you should revolt. I think most of our audience... Ah, we're not actually well, I'm not revolting, you know. <laughs> Sorry? All, all we're trying to do is uphold the British Constitution. We're not actually revolting. So this is a peaceful process, is it? Well, it would be great if it was. So anyway, those are the four uh, national campaigns. General strike, 
permanent huge demonstration, national civil di disobedience, or the military to arrest our criminal politicians. Those are the four national campaigns. And these are all on your website? Yes. Aren't they? Which is eutruth.org.uk. Yeah. And then, and then um, we can run local campaigns as, as individual people. So the most powerful and simple, and UKIP and the BMP could have done this so easily, is we need to change the minds of 70 MPs to get Lisbon repealed, right? So if we just go and visit these MPs, point out that Westminster is bound to be abolished by the EU, they will lose their comfortable 240,000 a year salary and expenses. And, of course, every dictatorship always uh, eliminates those that put it in power, because if they put it in power, they can take it out of power. So MPs are going to be under a huge threat once Westminster goes. But it's too late. <laughs> yeah, when, but when the EU uh, says, if what you're saying is correct, and let's yeah. uh, suppose for a moment that is the case, if uh, the EU eventually says, well, actually, we don't need a parliament anymore, so chara, you know, go home. Yeah. Um, the MPs are not going to be able to say, oh, hold on. Are oh, they? It's too late. No, no, no. If, if Westminster is still standing and MPs still exist, they but could... Won't they, they will all always... be on quangos? By yeah, yeah. If they're on 300,000 a year in quangos, OK, they may do nothing. But if they can't be bought off, you will notice that Jackie Smith set up FTAC in 2005. Fixated Threat Assessment. Yes, centre. Something centre, yes. yes. And what that is, is... The government can arrest anyone they want to um, with psychiatric stroke mental reasons as the excuse and subject them to electric shock treatment in the uh, attempts to cure them, water treatment, effectively torture. And they tried this out on 168 people. One man from Plymouth wrote a letter to Jackie Smith uh, objecting to her setting up a police state. He was seized by FTAC. What a perfect body, Soviet style to control any Westminster Dissident. politicians. Mm. Dissident Westminster politicians. Ideal. It's how they did it in the Soviet Union. Blow me down, they set up the same thing here. This is the future that any dissident Westminster MP is looking at. He's looking at being institutionalised, held against his will, and losing his 240,000 a year. Why shouldn't he swap sides? I have to say, that has some attraction, doesn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, if we had... Uh, 10,000 people, we've got 646 MPs, that's m more than 10 people to an MP. Every week someone should be sat in front of their MP saying, do you want to lose your 240,000 a year? Do you want to have electric shock treatment in a, in, in a hospital behind bars for the rest of your life because you're a dissident? Maybe not. Maybe you should vote against the EU dictatorship. Well, they can't vote. There is no vote, is there? No. A private member's bill can be brought in by any one of them. Yes, and then, and then the government says, no thanks, doesn't it? No, That's no, what no. always happens. No, no, no. If they get enough of them, they can vote it through. They can get it out. They can throw Lisbon out. They still can. So that's, that's another campaign. It's, okay. it's a very effective campaign. Well, so, someone is saying here, uh, arrange a strike date on your website, and when we get enough people prepared to do it, we'll go ahead. And they say, remember, rage against the machine, the Christmas number one, which was the response to yep. some appalling television yep. programme that always got its song mm. at number one. Yep. Um, we need to hit more people. We need to hit, you know, we need to hit 100,000 people in a month. We're only hitting 6,000 in a month at the moment. We need 100,000 people as an absolute minimum well, to do okay. something on that Someone scale. here is saying, hey, Theo, how do we get the population of the UK to combine with the nutters, as we are called, who speak the truth? You know, that is, that is the barrier, isn't it? You've come up, you've sat on this programme tonight, and you've said a lot of things which many people will probably mm -hmm. think are... too insane, too crazy mm. to yes. be true. Mm. Now, I don't know whether they're true or not. We, give you, we give you a platform to say those things, but a lot of people who watch it will be, you know, perhaps intrigued, perhaps a little bit believing, perhaps a little bit disbelieving.